Better your guy in a cave. Aroku Sneaky. To Ingrid and Roger as they Ratatata! Entertain the geeky mom. I I had I couldn't like I didn't know if you were doing like some, was, some Mexican like, like 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 Mexican music or it was all Caribbean. over the place. It was all over the place. I was so place. confused. Me too. What's up, guys? What's going on? Entertain uh, the geeky here. Trying to. I I I you know. I we need to start looking for a new jingle. By the way. Yeah. Uh, season one will end at the year. Yeah. Uh, we'll be starting with a brand new jingle. So, guys out there, send us your ideas. Yeah, and if you, we could, if you guys want to write a full jingle, record it, we could make a contest out of this, and your jingle could be the Entertain the Geeky jingle. For a whole year. Six months. We'll give you six months on the jingle. Six months? Yeah, then give somebody else a chance. Okay. That'd be fun. Whatever. We want to cut our season? Well, you know, yeah, six month season seems good. Six month season, boom. Yeah, yeah, because that's basically yeah. what we're at with this one. By the way, I'm Chris, and that's Roger. Wait, no, that's reversed. But, but we're both here. We're both here. So we're we're gonna talk about movies. Well, genre movies. Genre movies, because I know Halloween's over, but I just watched this interesting YouTube video on the state of horror, and not just horror movies, but the state of horror in general. And it placates to just how we as audiences work. Mm -hmm. And when you see movies like Paranormal Activity 7 or Ouija or um, the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot. What are the Annabelle movies? Yeah, Conjuring. Conjuring. But the Conjuring, okay, so. They're on like eight of those now. No, they're only on the third. Right? I don't don't know. know. All right, so here's the deal. Horror movies used to be very slow. Very dreadful, very methodic movies. Jump scares would happen, but they weren't the bread and butter of everything. And it seems now that that, that, that we have turned from allowing horror movies to integrate our minds and make us think and wonder to just jump scare after jump scare. And there is a movie that came out in 2014 called The Badook, which is what started this whole thing off. <laughs> Uh, the Badook. The Badook. Baba the Duke. Duke. The, the big, big pile of shit. Well, no, actually, okay, so it was a fantastic movie. Was it? It was fucking phenomenal. It was a monster movie done in the old school ways of monster movies where the monster was just there. It wasn't like you saw the monster and it was, it was you're running from it. It was creepy and, and, and the monster would come and go and you never got a glimpse of it. You were, you were drawn into the characters. Okay, so of, it was elusive. Right. You were drawn into the characters of this mother, de- this mother and son dealing with the fact that their husband slash father died, going through depression, going through all of this and having this event happen. So it was a very psychological thriller. And then what you see is when you go to IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes and you read the reviews, people are tearing this movie apart like saying, imagination is for kids. Where I waited all this whole entire movie what? just to see this bullshit monster? Yes. And that right there is my fucking problem with the audience Stupid nowadays. Stupid consumers. Fucking, you fucking idiot pieces of shit. Oh my gosh. Wow. I, no, I'm pissed. Hear me out. Here's why. You look at a movie like Paranormal, Paranormal Activity, the first one. The first one, generally fucking scary. Creepy. Did a very good job on a very shoestring budget. Sequels become nothing more than the same jump scares. People are no longer going to the movies to be scared. They're going to the movies to jump. And they think jumping is horror. But look at the classics. Look at what makes horror classical. Frankenstein, Dracula, The Exorcist, Jaws. All of these are the fear of the unfucking known Oh, this conversation's been had once before on this show. But hold You're on. afraid of what you don't know. But hear me out. Cause, cause here's months a... later, I'm right. Fuck you. Fuck you, Chris. Hear me out. <laughs> if, if if your idea of, of just seeing a crappy like like Halloween, Halloween yeah. is a, a prime example because you saw Mike Myers. Yeah, you saw what Mike Myers did. What made Mike Myers creepy, besides it being one of the, being the first slasher, what made him creepy was you don't know why he did what he did. He was just this unstoppable shape that just killed teenagers. It was fucking creepy. Nightmare on Elm Street. He got you in your dreams. But then, as Hollywood looks at jump scares, now you're being... Remember when you'd watch a horror movie and, like, you'd get scared, but you didn't feel relief because the terror was still coming? Yeah, well, like, jump scare back in the day was... They were used sparingly. Yes. Um, and the jump scare 
which now they try to do fake jump scares in movies. Well, they always did fake. Like Halloween had the fir- one of the first fake jump scares, yeah. but there was no music. There was no no. That's it, that's legit. Though. It was when the sheriff reached behind uh, uh, the doctor. The, the, I can't remember his fucking name. Uh, the doctor who was looking at the house. The, mm-hmm. the sheriff reached behind and pulled him around and like. There was no music. There was no boom, 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 loud noise. It was scary. Yeah. Because you were that character. You Yeah, you were engulfed in the film, basically. It wasn't the loud noise or the, oh my god, the lights just turned that out. That god-awful violin thing that they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that bullshit. And we, we, we have allowed, as an audience, and this is me talking to you fucking perds out there, because you're responsible for this as much as my... Everything in my life revolves around the fact that you suck, perds. You've allowed horror to become nothing but jump scares. And you've not allowed... A, you, you look at a video of people watching it in a movie. Like, like watching a movie. They jump scare. They smile. All the tension is gone. And that's not how horror movies are supposed to be. No, you're supposed to feel uneasy until the end. Until the very end. And you're supposed to walk out of that theater not quite sure what the fuck just happened. Well, no, you're supposed to walk out of the theater and not want to go to bed. Like the original Alien. How fucking terrifying was that movie? The original Alien was pretty creepy. And it, to walk out of the theater not realizing what you saw, The Exorcist, the same way. You know, you horror movies are supposed to make us think about what it is we just consumed. And if it, it's nothing but jump scares and bullshit explosions, you might as well wrap it up and call it a day. Yeah, with some stupid backstory about a possessed doll. Annabelle. The Conjuring... Okay, so real quickly. Here's why I like The Conjuring so much. Yeah. The first movie. I, I don't know if you've seen it or not. The first movie was done by James Wan, who who did American Horror Story, and has, has obviously knows how to work the genre. Yeah. But it was very slow. It, it built up very slowly. And, and at the end of the movie, you walked away going, holy fuck, what did I just experience? Now, The Conjuring 2 kind of fucked that up. But the first one, it was a very old school 1970s horror movie. And I, I just, I want to go back. I, God, I, I am that old man that says, get off my lawn. I want to go back to the days when horror movies were horror. But, you know, bad consumers, though, I, and I guess it's not just bad consumers, but the, the Christmas genre. Because it's the Christmas season now. Yeah. Let's look at this. When was the last rememberable Christmas movie. The last one that came out. Santa Claus with Tim Allen? No. 2004. Elf. I hated that movie. It's a good flick and it's I, it was extremely successful. That's, it was. That's, it's, it's a Christmas classic at this point. Yeah, but why is that? Because it was a good flick. No, no, no. no I mean, why? Okay, so what's your statement that we're not getting Christmas yeah, movies Yeah, we're not. Anymore? And like you had brought this up when we were talking before the show. It's because they never stopped doing summer blockbusters. No, it's all year round now. Look at when, when is Star Wars coming out? Yeah, Star Wars they is coming out, out in December. I, why? Because we now live in a world where Hollywood realizes that it used to be that we made a shit ton of money in the summer because kids were out of school and everything else, and you'd, you'd release your big bu- your big budgeted summer blockbuster movies in the summer when they were going to make the money. Now and and the fall fall and winter time was set aside for Forrest Gump. And the King's Speech. And, Christmas and flicks. Christmas flicks. And movies that were geared towards winning Oscars and different things. Now, people realize that... Hollywood realizes people will go see movies any fucking time of the year. Well, hold on though. Because you just brought this up. Kids are out of school. You know why Star Wars is coming out then? Kids are still in school. Fucking Christmas break. Kids are still in school December... Was December 16th? They start getting out right around then. Oh, shit. Maybe. That's when all that's when all the college students come home. Think about it. But that's when all the college students come home. They have mom and dad's money. What do you want to do? I want to go fucking see Star Wars. Well, fuck you and your Star Wars scene, my fucking asses. Sorry, I'm really excited for Rogue One. I just this is another one of my pet peeves: the summer blockbusters belong in the fucking summer. I agree. But the issue is also this: look, look, look at what the summer blockbusters entail of of the '90s. Like in the '90s, you had Jurassic Park, you mm-hmm. had Terminator Two, like. In the summer, you had one or two movies that were just big box office bombs. Well, no, now you have 12. Yeah, every week. A Marvel movie, a Star Wars movie, well, whatever I, Fox is doing, so the, Sony. No, 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 let's talk about this, though, because superheroes are the summer blockbusters now. But they're still coming out all year round. Doctor Strange just came out no, 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 two they, weeks ago. And, and, and you're right, they still do them during the winter. But superhero movies are the summer blockbusters. Yes. So, you you it's it's all the comic book films. So you have to put like so Star Wars has to come out in December now. 
because, because it can't interfere with Disney's source of revenue with Marvel. Right. Well, Disney does both now. So well, Disney, no. Disney is like, we're going to make billions of dollars every two months. Basically. Off these movies. Yeah. Because Star Wars is going to make a fuck ton of money. It yeah. doesn't matter if it comes out in May like the original or July. It's going to make a shit ton of money. It, well, it does matter because imagine if they put it out in fall or spring. Just some random time. They can't put out a Marvel movie then. They could. They can't because you, now they're competing for their own bucks. And that, like, so why would, if I was, if, as Disney, wouldn't you sit there and go, okay, this, this, this chunk. Well, no, obviously they have a timeline set out, like, um, because look, le- what was the last Marvel movie, or last big Disney movie that came out before, it was Finding Dory. Finding Dory. Then you have Doctor Strange. But, but Finding Dory and Doctor Strange, like, Finding Dory goes to a different target audience. It doesn't than... matter, it's all about the mighty dollar bill. Like, it, they have a brilliant release schedule. Yeah. Like, literally every month, they have a new movie come out that is going to make a jillion dollars. Yeah, like, let's look at it like this. You know, um, we only have release dates for Rogue One December 16th. Star Wars Episode Eight uh, is December 15th of 2017, which was pushed back from May. Then you have uh, the Star Wars uh, Han Solo movie May 25th. Um... So you've got so that's an actual summer blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, no, that's more. But but if it's anything like, they'll probably push it back like they did um, episode eight and release it in December. Because let's look at when the Marvel schedule is. You can keep talking while I look. Well, I mean, we I know we've got. uh, Oh my god! All right, Guardians of the Galaxy, May fifth. Spider-Man Homecoming, July seventh. Thor Ragnarok, November. Hold on, infinite. What what's May fifth? May 5th is Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 2. Oh, man. That's actually going to be a really good one. Yeah. So you've got, like, Marvel's coming out. Marvel has taken over the cinematic universe. Like, it's just, that's that's where it is. You know what's good about that, though? Like, now, so, uh, Doctor Black Strange. Pan- oh, sorry. No, oh, hold ahead. on. Black Panther, February 16th. Avengers Affinity War, May 4th. Ant-Man and the Wasp. July sixth, which we mean, which means Ant Man's gonna live through the first Infinity War. Captain Marvel, March eighth, and then the Untitled Avengers sequel, May third, twenty nineteen. So we're we're looking at the the yeah, they're pretty much coming out just throughout ever. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know what to tell you there. I don't know why they don't do Christmas movies. I don't know why we don't get what we used to get growing up, which was. Toy Story came out in Christmas time. Um, Again, it was it moved. Or Disney had a huge control, but they did not have the same stake in it that they do not. Like literally, they own everything now. Well, no one knew that. Like, like here's the difference between what Disney has now, what Disney had back then. No one knew the Lion King was going to make a billion dollars. No one knew that Toy Story was going to be what Toy Story was. I mean, think about what your very first CGI full-length motion picture, and it was phenomenal. Toy Story still holds up to this day. It does. But now you didn't know that that was going to make a boatload of money. You didn't know that was going to start a franchise. Marvel, our, our, D, our Disney now knows that... Everything is a franchise. It, it's Marvel and Star Wars, well, to, to and be, we'll do our movies To be fair, whenever. though, they bought Marvel. Yes, they like, did. They, they bought that as something that was set up. Yes, they did. To be a franchise. Yes, and, and they then bought they, Star Wars. And then they bought a franchise. Like, yeah, they no. were like, they were like, fuck it, we're just buying franchises now. Yeah, and, and it's working for them. It's great. Good job, Disney. Well, you know, okay, so I know like I've complained about having sequel after sequel after sequel. As if I. But the Marvel movies are getting to a beautiful place now, and they need to stop doing new character movies. Nope. Do they just need to stop doing superhero movies in general? No, 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 Let the dude, genre rest for no, a no, second. No, no, the, the genre is fine. Like I'm cool with it continuing, but like they've got okay, we got to do an intro story for this character now, and that's what people are sick of. Like Doctor Strange was an awesome movie. What, what was the when was the last Iron Man released? Oh my God, it's been years. Yeah, and you know there's still more stories to tell with that character. There are, but I don't think we're getting an Iron Man four anytime soon. <laughs> In fact, I didn't see it on their upcoming release for the next... Well, no, Robert Downey Jr. said he's not doing another standalone Iron Man Yeah, until right you, now. Yeah, until you offer him enough money to do it. I mean, he so anytime he's in a 
one of these movies, once they reach X amount of dollars on it, he gets kickbacks well, yeah. on every dime. So he's the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Yeah. He's I mean, a, he's a jillionaire. Yeah. I don't From think, one role. I don't think they have From to From one role, oh, he's a jillionaire. And the new Sherlock Holmes is coming out with him and Jude Law. Yeah. I'm stoked about that. But again, another sequel. But no, um, okay, so here, here's what I was going to say, though. Like, I am getting sick of the sequels, but they're at a point now to where you've got enough established characters, do some crossover movies, uh, which we've gotten some, or... And we're getting the big crossover movie. Infinity War. Infinity War. Or a couple of, like, a couple of, hey, this is the, you know, this character's, you saw him be born, now you get to see him start to find his way in this movie. Like, I would like a little bit more of that. I... <sighs> Instead... Well, this is what everybody's sick of. Everybody's sick of the superhero origin story. I'm, I'm even more... I'm not... For me, it's not just superhero origin story. I, I think I'm... on And this... this Here we go. This is going to really make me sound like a jackass. I think I'm tired of the superhero versus supervillain story. I, I, I think I'm tired of a just a character that, 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 that meets its villain and then there has to be a, a big fight and they're done... I would be. I would more happily sit through a Doctor Strange movie, or a Captain America movie, or a superhero movie where where the character is struggling with just being a superhero. Did you watch Doctor Strange yet? Not yet. Okay. I'll wait for it to come out on DVD, like all the other superhero you movies. See, at this you see, you actually there's a there's a inner conflict there, and that's a big part of that movie. And well, there should be. I mean, that's what made Spider Man too. Spider-Man 2 was so good for that movie, the inner conflict of Peter Parker trying to be Peter Parker and trying to be Spider-Man. And, and the That's consequences fair. of both. Bat, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy did it wonderfully. I know you hate those fucking movies, but they did. I mean, uh, the Dark Knight... I don't see... In those movies, there wasn't... He didn't have a conflict. Like, the, the, the worst thing that happened is somebody's like, Oh, you like this girl? I might kill her. I might kill... The Attorney General. Until you saw the worst of the three, which was The Dark Knight Rises? Yeah. The one, one with one with Kane? Ugh. Or, or whatever the fuck his name is? Same, he was basically the wrestler Kane. Yeah, he was. But yeah. Um, Bane. That was his name, Bane. Yeah. Um, you saw you saw a Bruce Wayne that was beaten and, and broken and torn down before he even put the bad suit back on. I was... The movie was... Uh, I yeah, just don't it, like that one. It wasn't a good movie. I'm not saying it was a good movie. What I'm saying is there have been no consequences in these movies. Well, no, and you're, you're right about that. But like with the Batman movies, that the, like the Dark Knight trilogy, he was Batman in all of them. Like Bruce Wayne was was the mask. Yeah, and that's and, the way. But hold on, that's that, the way Batman that, should be. That is the way Batman should be. So when when you're like, oh, there's no consequence. Bruce Wayne cares very little about Bruce Wayne. So like when you're like, oh, we're gonna kill Commissioner Gordon's daughter okay no no bat hold on yeah bruce <laughs> wayne doesn't care batman cares about the death of commissioner gordon's daughter because that's batgirl damn it not in that universe she's not <laughs> she might be she's a love interest well, no that's in the killing joke and fuck that movie too no she's not <laughs> she's not supposed to be a love interest there she's supposed to be robin's love interest damn it yeah whatever movie was bad movie was so bad but that's the problem we have. And it was six hours long. Yeah. No, it was literally three hours and something. Yeah. Okay. I, I sat through nine Ooh. hours of fucking hobbits walking through the damn forest on a picnic. That's what Lord of the Rings was. I'm, am, am I the only person in the theater that, that when the Battle of Helm's Deep started and they cut to fucking Frodo and Bilbo, or Frodo and Sam, that I, I got pissed <laughs> off and threw my popcorn at the screen? Because I didn't give a shit about the ring. I waited for two and a half hours to see this massive fight build up at Helm's Deep, and you cut away for some bullshit midgets walking with the ring. Fuck that! Wow. Sorry, I'm still, I'm still raging on that. Fucking Hollywood, they Dude. fucked our movies. I want Christmas movies again. Damn it. Good ones. Yeah. Good ones. You, yeah. I want Santa Claus. I want Elf. I want the fucking a Christmas story. Oh, oh my god. Which bombed horribly at the box office. Hands down. Uh, but that's everybody's favorite Christmas movie. I don't know if it's that. Mine's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Not well, the Jim Carrey one. Of the course good one. not. Um, but no, like that's... Every year I have to watch a Christmas story. Yeah. Or I get pissed off. Do you? It, like I get some kind of depression if I don't watch it, yes. That's because I sad. feel like the cycle is not complete. That's very sad. I kind of want to hug you. It's borderline like 
it's almost like something a serial killer has to do, like to 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 complete the process of Christmas. <laughs> you have to watch a Christmas story. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's a major award. It's fragile. <laughs> yeah. Must be. So we're, Jason is like, we're at the fantasy shop moving boxes, and Jason is like, write fragile on the ones with statues. Write fragile. Fragile. So naturally i'm like i have to spell this like it's fragile and not actually <laughs> fragile so i spelled it fragile and then i put in parentheses italian or from italy <laughs> from italy it's important <laughs> and uh i can't wait till they open those boxes they're gonna be like what idiot was trying to spell this and then <laughs> then they'll remember oh yeah chris said he was doing this uh so what did we what, what did we learn tonight what we learned tonight is bring back the summer blockbuster and in, let it be that in the summer. In the summer. You know where I think this started, though. Huh? I honestly, I, I think this started with Lord of the Rings, because The Hobbit was released in the winter, no. and Lord of the Rings was released in the winter. I was gonna say the Lord of the Rings was, but um, there, I mean, Lord of the Rings was not meant to be a summer movie blockbuster. It wasn't. Fuck! It wasn't. It wasn't. Hold on, what do we have? An epic storyline, massive special effects, huge battles, a movie that was going to make a bajillion dollars. Did they know that that was going to make a bajillion? Yes. I don't think they did. I think they did. New Line Cinema knew that movie was going to make a bajillion dollars. You know what You know, You know. know what The Fall is supposed to be for? Movies like The Crow. Yeah. The Crow is an indie film. I don't give a fuck. It's, it's meant, a cult classic. It's meant, And they're doing a remake. Rush Hour. Rush Hour is what's supposed to come out that no, time. That's right. a summer movie, too. Not even. Bullshit. I just want to watch Rush Hour right now. Why? I love Rush Hour, though, to be honest with you. I love those flip. movies. I love all three of them. Shanghai Noon? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Uh, whatever happened to those? Whatever happened to bullshit comedies? Like Shanghai... Like the action comedies. You know, that that is something that went the way of the West. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because, yeah, like, you had... It, well, Jackie Chan was a part of all of them. Jack, well, you had Jackie Chan, you had Chris Tucker, you had... You still had... Like, oh, well, they're bringing it back. We have Bad Boys 3 and 4 coming out. Yeah. Um, hey, whatever, Bad Boys was good. But uh, as long as what the you right gonna guys... What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come I just don't want Michael Bay to touch it. Michael Bay's gonna touch it. He made the first two and they were good. I know. Michael I just, Bay does good when he blows shit up. I just don't like Michael Bay. You, you know my thing about Brett Ratner? My, my argument for Brett Ratner is for him never to touch a superhero movie... Never to touch a Silence of the Lambs movie and just make fucking black guys and Asians fighting crime. Because that's what he's good at. <laughs> he's good at the Rush Hour movies. Oh, fucker. They are good. They are good. I actually, yeah, I took a, yeah, I, know, I was about to say something very bad. I took a girl, my, one of my first dates was to see the first Rush Hour movie back in high school. The movie kicked ass. Funny. Got to cop a feel. It was a good time. Got a hole in the bottom of the popcorn. You said, do you want some popcorn? Salt burned my pee hole. You know, my grandfather used to tell me that before every date I went on. Did he really? He was like, hey, make sure you get a big bag of popcorn, cut a hole in the bottom. You know what I, you know what you need to do after that, right, son? Right, 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 huh? And that's how your dad ended up going into car sales. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Oh, my grandpa told me all kinds of fucked up stuff, too, so I ended up doing car sales as well. Yay! I might join you. Do it. Let's do it. Let's sell some cars. All right, guys. So I want to go ahead and direct you to BeastEscapeRoom.com. And enter the promo code GEEKY for 20% off your one-hour experience at Beast Escape Room. It's it's worth it. Get a group of people together. You go. You try to get the hell out of this room before something bad happens. Before you die. Before your inevitable end. Um, As always... Like us on Facebook at Entertain the Geeky. Follow us on Twitter at Entertainment Geeky. Entertaining Geeky. Entertaining Geeky. We are on YouTube at Entertain the Geeky. And Instagram as Entertain the Geeky. Yes. Yes, we are everywhere. Um, quick shout out real quick. On Sunday, December 5th, we will be demoing... Merle's Truck Stop in Maine, the $1 role-playing game. Before it hits the presses, we want to get some feedback. At the brand new... Fantasy Shop in Creef Core. Go to Fantasy Shop online for directions to their new store, but I believe it's right there at Olive and New Ballas Road. Sure is. Right next to Ibella Beads, where you can see the lovely Tara Berry. Oh! And First Watch, where you can get your eggs. Breakfast and games? Breakfast and games. Sounds like a damn good time. Guys, stay geeky.